Good evening, everyone. I'm John Moriarty, and welcome to my new vlog series, Pictures on the Fly. WandaVision is the Marvel Cinematic Universe's first series streaming exclusively on Disney+. It stars Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, and Paul Bettany as The Vision. Wanda and Vision find themselves already established in a small town of Westview, where everything is black and white, and styled like a 1950s sitcom with laugh track and everything. As each day goes by, time jumps forward a decade, from the 60s to the 70s to the 80s to the 90s, and finally the early 2000s. As they're living their everyday lives, they start to notice some strange things happening around them. Random voices coming from radios, mysterious people appearing out of nowhere, and eventually they realize something isn't right. During this time, we as the audience discover that Wanda, Vision, and the people of Westview are inside this strange anomaly that's cut off from the outside world. Meanwhile, this government organization, much like S.H.I.E.L.D., is trying to contact them and enter the anomaly. We see a couple side characters from previous MCU movies and are introduced to a couple new characters, which we'll probably see in future stories. So naturally, when I heard about this, I was really interested in what the MCU was going to do. I've followed the MCU uh, since the first Iron Man movie, and I've watched every single movie since uh, for the past 12 years. And eventually, when Avengers Age of Ultron came out, I was really excited to see what they were going to do with uh, Scarlet Witch, Vision and Quicksilver, um, even though that wasn't really the first time that I saw these characters. My first exposure to uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision uh, didn't actually come from Age of Ultron. It actually came from the Avengers cartoon show, which aired on Fox Kids uh, back in the late 90s. And I remember watching that show and watching those characters and wasn't really that interested in them. They didn't really seem they didn't really seem like fleshed out characters to me. However, I, I do like what the MCU has been doing with these characters since Age of Ultron. Um, they haven't really been the center of their own of their own movie or their own story since then, but you could definitely see their evolution through the different Avengers movies since then. So in other words, I really enjoyed the show. I think my favorite parts of the show were actually the parts where they were satirizing the different uh, sitcoms. If you're aware of television history, uh, then you'll most likely know uh, what shows and what sitcoms this show is satirizing in, in every episode based on the decade. Like you can see, you can definitely see a little bit of Dick Van Dyke. Uh, you can you can see a little bit of Mary Tyler Moore. You can see a little bit of uh, the Bewitched. Uh, I Dream of Jeannie countless other classic TV shows, sitcoms, that you would probably see on, on Nick at Night or, or uh, you know, on MeTV at this point. <laughs> what's, what's also interesting about the show is the mystery. Uh, you're, you're, so, you're so sucked into, into the, the comedy, into the, you know, just how very detailed and how very fantastical the, the sitcoms are. But then once you start noticing the elements of the mystery start to come in, uh, it, it grabs your attention even more. Like, you're trying to figure out what is going on, like, what's happening, like, is any of this real or not? What's also funny about the show is uh, during the episodes, uh, while, they're in, while they're in the TV world, while they're in TV land, they would show commercials that were made specifically for these different decades. And even, even in, in those commercials, you would, see, you would see strange little hints here and there, have something having to do with either the the Marvel Universe on its own, or something about whatever is happening like in, in real life. The mystery of the earlier episodes really, really drags you in, and, it, and it, it manages to also take its time while unfolding the mystery. Like, it, not everything is spelled out within the first episode. Like, you eventually do go a few more episodes. You go further into more episodes and you learn a little bit more about what's really going on. And I, th I thought that was great for, for this show. And obviously because this is an MCU story, there are parts of the MCU movies that eventually do make their way into, into the general story. And eventually when it does get to that point, some of the, the charm of the earlier episodes kind of fades away a little bit, particularly uh, towards the, the three-quarter mark. And in that time leading up to that point, there are some surprises that, that get 
that do pop up here and there, uh, which did kind of take me by surprise, uh, for better or for worse. Um, and some of them were actually good surprises overall. Um, some of the surprises I, I did like, others not so much, but I can't really say that it did anything to really ruin the, the show for me. Uh, I still enjoyed the show very much, and I still highly recommend you watching this. I could go more into great detail with the different surprises later on in the season, but I think I'm just going to leave it leave it where that is uh, in, a, in a different video. I'll, I'll do a, a spoiler video after this. But overall, as I said before, I, I really enjoyed the show, and I highly recommend it. All nine episodes are now streaming on Disney Plus. You can you can go on there and you can watch all you can binge the entire series on there. So with all that said, I'm gonna give WandaVision a B plus. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on WandaVision, you can check out my spoiler review after this video. And if you like what you saw in this video, you can hit that like and subscribe button right down there. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next picture. Take care. Thank you.